Right, so following on from pulling the BYD blade battery pack apart out of the Addo 3, um, I pulled this contact block out of it. Um, couldn't really, haven't really seen anywhere on the battery pack where there is a a fuse anywhere. Like the positive, the positive bus bar just comes up to this point over here, this this bolt here, and the negative of all the cells comes over to this point. Oh, where is it? I'm the camera there. Um, comes up to this point here, but there's no fuse on the actual pack, so I'm assuming there's a fuse somewhere inside inside this somewhere. So we've got the low voltage connections in here, the aircon pipes that go to the chiller fed in through here on the front of the pack there, and these are your two high voltage connections there. Uh, looking over it, I did notice there's a couple plastic snaps that, that, uh, that will snap off of the pack. Got what looks to be a pre-charge resistor here and a little pre-charge relay over here. Um, yeah, so I'll pull it all apart and see if I can find a fuse in this thing. No, no signs of a fuse in there, just a bus bar straight from there up to there, across to there, into this contactor here, and from there up to here, which then goes on this link bar over to the other side where the high voltage connector is out of the battery. So no fuse in there, and we'll continue pulling it apart. But. Alright, so we've got the battery management board that feeds off into the all the little BMS daughter boards on it. So I'm looking at this as obviously the connector that goes off to all the contactors, I'm guessing there. Yeah, that switches all the contactor coils. Uh, we've got a shunt at the end here. I'm uh, not. Uh, that'll be measuring the current flow in and out of the battery. We've got a whole heap of uh, what looks to be some little resistors and that in there. They're covered in hot glue. Um, that all be for like uh, isolation detection and stuff like that. A couple of little bits of hot glue shoved around in here, including on the um on the processor there. All high voltage marks on it. Putting it all back together, and I found that these terminals here, a high voltage positive, goes over the via these connectors here. Over to this block here, which I thought was the what the going to be the wires for the uh, contactor coils, but it's actually just the high voltage sense wires for the BMS motherboard here. So I know you know what pack voltage is and pre-charge and all that sort of gaff. First contactor out, so 250 amp, 12 volt contactor, nice little package, just chip in plug, couple copper terminals on top. Alright, 
onto the other half. Pre-charge relay, oh, thing to focus, no, oh, 10 amp relay and contactor. Come on, and here she is, does have a fuse, 350 amp, 800 volt. Right, let's get the rest of it apart. Pre-charge resistor, no specs on it, there's some numbers on the side there. And the negative contactor, looks like it's identical to the positive one, where is that? Let's get this crap off the top here. Is that the negative side? Uh, I think it was. I'm going to go back and have a look. Mm, the stickers are different, but the part numbers are the same. Oh, there we go. Slightly different mounting lugs. That's a, that's a bad design. Are the part numbers the same then? Any two BCIS GLC stash one. Dash one, change the lug across. Way to make your assembly line more complex and expensive. Uh, yeah. Uh, and we've got just the HV port. Oh, it's got a little part number on it as well. See so if we can get that out of the light. I've got to get all the other part numbers now as well. So that's that contactor. And that contactor. And the fuse. This little low voltage connector, which didn't have any numbers on it, other than this sticker here. Got a QR code. Thing. These also got little QR codes on them. So it's not a bad design, they've crammed a lot of stuff in where they could, you know, across the front of the battery pack there, but, you know, why they're different, I'll never know. The fuse is quite good, it's quite small for the size that it is. Pre-charge resistor is what it is. Connector's quite small. Low profile, no sort of interlock on it at all. 
So you could unplug this and theoretically if the contact is still powered up, it wouldn't have any idea that you've unplugged it. Don't know how I feel about that. There we go, all right. Looking a little bit further into the interlock circuit on it, uh, I went and grabbed the actual cable that runs up to the inverter junction box up under the bonnet there. This is the, so this is the bit that plugs into the battery, and this is the bit that plugs up into the inverter there. The connector that plugs into, into here actually does have a, let's zoom that in for you does actually have a little set of shorting pins in the middle there for closing an interlock circuit. But, on here, there's nothing actually in there. There's just an empty, empty spot. So it looks like they've, they've got the ability to have an interlock circuit on this plug, but they've just decided to not implement it. Now, this other end here, you know, doesn't really look like it has a set of shorting pins. There might be something down in there that's shorting out. I need to have a bit of a closer look at the car. So, to see if that will actually disable it. Oh. All right, and one final last little bitty bit uh, before I go. Um, this is the cooling channels, or well, where the aircon port, aircon pipes come into the, um, into the front of the, the battery pack. Uh, I've locked this off it because I don't, I'm not going to need all this stuff on it and I want to create more space. So I'll sort of have a bit of a close up here, you can see. So each one of these plates which runs out, which runs out across the, uh, the top of the battery pack is just full of tiny little channels there for the refrigerant to run into. Uh, yeah, I just thought while well, I've got you on the, in on the desk in here, I might give a bit of a close-up of this for you as well. All right. Thanks for watching.